Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Tanya Elliott, Medical Director at Doctor On Demand, and we're here at our San Francisco headquarters, which is also our cold and flu headquarters, with a special guest today, Mr. Jay McGraw, who is the founder of Doctor On Demand. So thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, today. I'm excited to be here. My first Facebook Live. Yeah, it's fun. It's exciting. This is now my third oh. Facebook Live, so I'm becoming You're a pro. Home. Yeah. Um, but uh, today we're going to be answering our patients' most common questions about cold and flu. Um, and you had a question too, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, I so I figure we might as well wait to answer it. Sure, so my question is, uh, is it too late for me to get the flu shot? That's a great question. So flu season is from October to May, oh. actually, so even into the spring months. And so at any point during that time, you can get the flu shot, but you should probably call ahead at this point to some pharmacies because there can be a shortage. Yeah, they so be I guess a better way to ask my question is, do I really have to get the flu shot? I hate getting the flu shot. Yes, so that's sort of not negotiable. Uh -huh. um, you know, with the flu, it's caused by influenza virus uh -huh. and um, that could potentially cure you. But I'm, I always feel like when I get the shot, it gives me the flu. Like. Am I gonna get sick from getting it? Yeah, so that's kind of a wives' tale that it actually gives you the flu. So what happens is the flu vaccine is actually little bitty killed parts of the virus itself. Okay. So what it does is it revs up your immune system. So you know how bad you feel when you first get the flu shot, multiply that by 100, okay. and that's how you would actually feel if you got the okay. flu. Okay, so it does make me feel a little under the weather, but like not. Any yeah, information. and that just basically means your immune system works. You can get a little bit of a fever, a little bit of a pain, pain here because your immune system is revving up mm -hmm. and then developing a memory and saying, okay, this is what the flu looks like, and now I know and I'm going to be okay. prepared if I'm ever hit with the actual I never virus. got them, and then when I had kids, they told me I had to get them. And I'm thinking, well, they're getting older. Like, can I start, you know, not getting it anymore? But the answer is no. The, the answer is definitely no to that. And then people at extremes of age are more susceptible to complications of the flu. So young kids and the elderly, really important. And then anybody who has a history of a disease like asthma or diabetes or anything like that, that's where you see the complicated So cases. why is it, though, that I hear or feel like I sometimes get the flu shot but then still get the flu? So small percentage of people can still get the flu, and that's just because of the way that the flu shot is made. And so every year scientists actually get together and decide which particular strains of virus should go in the flu shot. So I don't know if you remember in 2010, there was the H1N1 yeah, sure. scare, and so that was because we chose the wrong strain uh -huh. of the flu virus to go into the vaccine. The good news is this year, we've had a good match. The bad news about this year is that the flu is rampant, especially in particular parts of the country, in the Midwest, in Colorado, so really important to get out there and get the flu shot. Okay, so last question and then we'll take somebody else's, but how do I know then if I'm getting sick, if I'm supposed to call you? Because we spent Thanksgiving together one year. That's right, we did uh, call. Was it, uh, this year actually, we took the kids to New York City for the parade and uh, got sick. So we're on the road, you know, perfect use for Dr. Underman, uh, and you answered the call. Um, and I actually did need to go to the CVS across the street. So how do I know though when it's time for me to call versus not call? Yeah, so that's a great question. And so I would say sooner rather than later, and that's particularly important for the flu because if you're really feeling run down and you have fevers, sore throat, muscle and body aches, really important to be evaluated for the flu because there's actually a cure and a treatment but it needs to be started in the first 48 hours. So the first 48 hours is critical. The other piece of it is, let's say you just are coming down with a cold or something like that. There are things that we can provide you with to help decrease the duration of your symptoms and just help you feel better faster. And so with Dr. On Demand, you get connected with a doctor like me, which is how I treated you. You just click the button and yep. I popped up like Samantha from Bewitch. <laughs> um, but you know, then you get a personalized treatment plan from our primary care physicians. Um, we also have emergency physicians actually mm -hmm. on the platform. And so you can get connected with a board certified primary care doctor, emergency room doctor, and get treated right away. It was cool because, I mean, we joked that you saved our Thanksgiving, but seriously, you know, had I, I, I was, I felt terrible. 
and I, I walked across the street or Erica walked across the street for me, got the prescription, came back. And the next morning I was completely back on track and we were able to go to the Rockettes and do all the things with the kids. And had I not, I, I, and I know I would have spent the whole trip in the hotel room. Right. It's like particularly good if you're on vacation to sort of have a physician in your pocket, so to speak, because otherwise where would you have gone when you're not yeah. able to contact your regular doctor, right? right? You would have gone to the urgent care and sat there for six hours, maybe mm -hmm. even picked up other germs yeah, exactly. or got to the emergency room. So it's really helpful. The other piece of it is just, Navigating the over-the-counter pharmacy aisles, it's a really scary place. And so just to know, even if it is a cold, like what multi-symptom cold and flu remedy should I get? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how much of this stuff should I be taking? Is it gonna interact with some of my other medications? And so that's really important to yeah. just have that knowledge before you go in and start spending all this money on over-the-counter medicine. Yeah, I, um, I buy completely different stuff over-the-counter now because of Dr. on Demand, because I was buying the stuff that had too much of this ingredient and not enough of that ingredient. And it was just, you know, it ended up making me feel worse. And after I, you know, was able to ask you guys, um, it actually helps my cold. Yeah, and the other part of the way that Doctor on Demand works is our doctors give the, as you know, personalized patient instructions, which you have on your phone with you. So then when you go into the pharmacy, you can actually look at it and <laughs> say, okay, this is the medicine they recommended yes. and go and pick it up and it doesn't leave I can't there. tell you how many times I've taken my, the notes in Dr. Underman and showed it to the pharmacist and they're like, oh yeah, it's on aisle seven, bottom right. Yeah, exactly, which makes it that much easier. Yes. Um, so we're going to move on also to some of our other patient questions. We covered a lot of them, but um, what is the difference between a cold and a flu? So how can I tell the difference? And then what about a sinus infection? So I want to kind of explain and break it down for everybody. So. Cold and the flu both caused by viruses, but the flu is caused by influenza virus, and there's a vaccine for it that can cure you, and there's an antiviral medication called Tamiflu that can treat it and cure it if you do come down with the flu. The cold is caused by a bunch of different viruses, and there is no cure for the common cold. Um, the symptoms, though, tend to be more mild. So, you know, the way I would describe it is you wake up in the morning, you're feeling kind of crummy, runny nose, congestion, but you feel like you could still plow through and go to work. When you have the flu, you feel like you were hit by a bus and you have fevers and a sore throat and you have the tissues piled up by the side of the bed, which you shouldn't do. You should keep it in the garbage can because <laughs> everybody else is going to get sick. Um, but it really is much more severe when you have the flu. Um, but a lot of times the symptoms are pretty similar and again when you're in doubt it's really important to get addressed and make sure that we've sort of ruled out the flu for you. Sinus infections really um, are often found alongside cold and flu. Um, sinuses are hollow cavities in your face and so if you're finding that you have like facial pain and pressure it's probably because there's like viral fluid sitting in your sinuses. So what happens is if you don't treat your cold symptoms early enough, there's no way for that mucus and that viral fluid to go, and then it can get infected again by bacteria. So Yeah, because I feel like a sinus infection always follows a cold. Exactly. So okay. Yeah, so it's usually like, you know, you have cold <clears throat> symptoms that are still lingering, you have this pressure in your face, you're hitting like 10 to 12 days, and then all of a sudden you feel like you have pain on one side of your face and then maybe even a toothache taste like a funny taste in the back of your mouth, that's a sign that you can have a bacterial sinus infection. In that case, you would probably need an antibiotic. Okay. Yeah. So it's important to kind of know the difference, but we're not asking you to know the difference. Um, that's what we're here for, the click of a button and you can connect with one of our doctors and who knows, you might even get me. Um, let's see here, do we have any other questions? You know, the benefit of Facebook Live is if you do have questions, feel free to reach them and we can reach me. Um, and I'm happy to answer them. So somebody just asked, what should I do if I feel the flu coming on? So hydration is really important, getting enough sleep is really important, and just listening to your body. You, you're not gonna be the hero going into work when you're sick because you're just gonna get everybody else sick. So it's really important to listen to your body and get some rest. Um, you know, the other piece of it is there are a couple of, um, over-the-counter sort of things you can do and also homeopathic things. So there's actually a truth to the chicken soup um, and studies have shown that if you take chicken soup and you have it on a regular basis when you're starting to come down with cold and flu symptoms that it can actually decrease the duration of your symptoms. So why is it though that um, 
the, the people get the flu more in the winter? Because I understand in certain parts of the country, everyone's inside more or whatever, but in Southern California, our lives don't change much. We're still outside and doing the same thing. So why is it still seasonal when we don't have seasons? Yeah, it's a really great question. And it, the flu actually starts earlier in, you know, in China and Australia and then sort of migrates mm -hmm. over and then lands in the U.S. in October and then it just kind of lingers there through May. So it's just the virus itself it's just the way it works. in the air and then it sort of migrates and makes its way over. Um, but again, it's so important to identify those symptoms early and if you're not feeling well, just connect with a doctor. And I should say the doctor on demand is actually covered by most insurances. That's right. Um, as you know, we found it the company. Yeah, exactly. But all you have to do is enter in your insurance information at the beginning of the app and see whether or not it's yeah. covered. So it and a lot of employers too. So a lot of people yeah. don't realize it, but they don't even actually have to pay for their visits. Right, and so the job will cover it. So all you have to do is just put in your insurance info and then it'll tell you if you owe, you may owe zero dollars and be able to connect with a, with a physician. And then if you need a prescription after our assessment, we take you through a physical examination, we just send it to your pharmacy like we did for you over yeah. Thanksgiving, and then you just go pick it up. So. I mean, it was there before Erica could walk across. We could see this, uh, the pharmacy from our window in the hotel, and I could watch her walk across the street, and it was there and waiting before she even got to the pharmacy. Yeah, so what we instruct our doctors to do, if we do need to send a prescription, they actually do it in the visit with you. So they confirm your pharmacy information, and then they send it, and then that goes over instantly to the pharmacist's queue and so that's why it's literally waiting for you to pick up as soon as you end the call with the doctor which is like talk about great customer service yeah. so it's pretty neat um, and you know when it's indicated that's sort of the case otherwise we give you detailed patient instructions and we tell you you know what you need to do what steps you need to take to get better so what else other questions here I have a list of the most common questions that our um, patients have been asking um, so Here's a question actually from one of our viewers that there are a lot of stories in the news about people going to the emergency room because they have the flu. And so people want to know, should I be worried? You know, should I run out to the emergency room? And this gets back to what I was talking about before. So extremes of age, those people are the susceptible populations. Meaning if you're really young and you're really sick or you're really old and have a bunch of medical conditions and medical problems, those are the populations where I would say, connect with Dr. On Demand and we can help you figure out whether or not it makes sense to go to the emergency room. But most of the time you don't need to, you just need to seek care early. So what I wouldn't recommend is feeling really terribly for a week and not doing anything about it. And remember the medicine only works within those first 48 hours. So really important if you're not feeling well to just connect and with a doctor who can actually visualize and see you through video and say, you know what, you're just too sick, you need to go to the ER, or this is something that we can treat, rest at home, and give you the racks and get you the meds that you need. Yeah, you know, when we started this company, one of the reasons to do it was to lower the barrier to care, because either you've got the flu and you need to be treated and have medicine prescribed, and you can do it from the comfort of your own home for not a lot of money, or you can get dressed and get in your car at the time that you least want to do so, drive across town, sit in a waiting room with a bunch of other sick people for 90 minutes or two hours or whatever it is, pay an arm and a leg. And, uh, and so, you know, we wanted to create an easier way to do that, but we also wanted to create an opportunity to prevent you from unnecessarily going to the emergency room. And so, I would way rather, uh, you know, either pay the $49 or have my insurance cover the visit to find out, no, you don't need to go and spend the entire afternoon in the emergency room with your sick kid or with your sick, you know, yourself. Um, you just need to eat some chicken soup and, uh, you know, take some cold and flu medicine, whatever it may be. Exactly. And so uh, I hope that people are enjoying the process of saying, I'm going to take care into my own hands. I'm going to call just because it's easy to do so. And I'm going to increase the level of care that I have. And, you know, it's, you look at like those NyQuil commercials, you can tell when someone's sick, right? Exactly. I mean, you look at somebody and you go through the diagnostic tests that you've put me through, I know. But the second you see somebody, it's such a visual medium. You can say, that is a sick person. They're flushed, their nose is crusted over, they can't sit up straight, their eyes are swollen. Um, it's, it's just so obvious to you what's going on when exactly. you can see us. And our doctors look through other things, look for other things too. And so when we take you through that phys physical examination, it's really important. We're getting really valuable data, so to speak, to really understand the severity of what's going on. So if you think about what the other options are, like I would never want 
for my kid to call the pediatrician's office, let's say after hours, and then just have somebody not actually see my child. Right. Um, if I have the opportunity to have them go on and actually have a doctor see them face to face, and then have that visit and make the assessment, that reassurance for me is huge. It's a little inside baseball, but I love to watch some of the protocols that you teach the doctors to appropriately do this, right? Where you say, you can look at me over the phone and say, you know, right here, I want you to push here. You know, this is how hard I want you to push and to explain it because you can see exactly what I'm doing. You can see how I react. I don't have to explain it to you. It's amazing how you've been able to create protocols and train the doctors to be so uh, effective in the way that they're doing all this. Yeah, so, you know, if you haven't, tried our service before, you don't have to be sick to try it. But I would say if you're hesitant to see a primary care doctor through video, you should you know, give Dr. On Demand a try and, so, and be prepared in the event that you are sick um, to you know, just click a button and connect with one of our doctors. So yeah, my favorite review is, I thought that was too good to be true, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it really exists. This is amazing. It really works. Well, sure, you know, we're all board certified primary care doctors who you know, do this in addition to seeing our regular patients in the office too. So Jay, thank you so much for joining yeah, us fun. today. And if anybody has additional questions or wants to connect with myself or another one of our doctors, uh, we're available 24-7. So we're here to help. Thanks so much, guys.